Hosea chapter 2. One book, Brian. Hosea chapter 2. Verse 1. Brian, could you please repeat that for me? Yes, Hosea chapter 2, verse 1. Thank you. Okay, we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this time that we can gather in your name and in your, your house, Lord. Please be with us and help us to learn all that you have for us to learn and help us to apply it to our lives just uh, be with us as this week uh, is coming lord that we would uh, that you would guide us and give us grace for everything that is to come thank you amen, amen. so hosea 2 verse 1 say you unto your brethren ami and to and to your sister Rama, plead with your mother and plead for she is not my wife neither am i her husband let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts lest i strip her naked and set her in the day that as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredom. For their mother has played, har played the harlot. She has conceived them, uh, has done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax mineral oil and my drink therefore behold i will hedge up thy way with thorns i will make a wall that she shall not find her paths and she shall follow after her lovers but she shall not overtake them and she shall seek them but shall not find them then shall she say i will go and return to my first husband for then was it better with me than now for she did not know that i gave her corn and wine and mint and oil and multiplied her silver and gold which they prepared for ball therefore i will return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness and now will i discover her lewdness in the sight of of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of my hand i will also cause all her mirth to cease her feast days her new moons her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them, and I will visit upon her, her, day, uh, her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewelry, and she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. So you have a spot where, where, it, where Israel had chased after everything else. She, she chased after everything in the world, 
looked at all the nations around her and chased after all of those things and uh, and then counted all those things that she was getting as things she was getting from from her different from her from her adulterous ways but it was all things that God was multiplying to Israel uh, and she was counting it as things that she was getting for herself that the Israel was getting for itself and uh, we have we have uh, lots of things in our own lives that we have to be cautious for. It's a caution for us that we make sure to follow after God in His ways. We'll go to John 14, verse 15. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So a simple, a, a simple commandment for, for Jesus to give, a simple question with a commandment that if we love him, we're supposed to do as he says. Do, do what he says to do. It's, a, it's an important thing for us. And he doesn't just say it just to you know, keep us under his thumb or something, but he has a reason and purpose for everything he writes. Everything that he writes is for our own good and to keep us on the right path. All these things in which Israel was chasing after were things that they thought that they would get and it would give them something that they would make them give them money or make them more liked or whatever it was they were seeking. They were seeking after all those things, but God had the best way for Israel to go. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God told them, that uh, gave them clear, clearly that they were supposed to be obedient to him, to go, to do his things, keep his commandments, keep his ways. And like with us, we also are, uh, we're also told that we're supposed to keep doing what the Lord says for us to do. And, you know, things may not always be a bed of roses just because we do what God says, but we can know that God will be with us in whatever happens, whatever will befall us, that God, God will be with us. We always have that, 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 that comforter, the Holy Spirit that is, that is with us. Uh, right after John 14, 15, it talked about the comforter, that Jesus was going to send the comforter to, to them. Well, and that's it. God's with us, and he helps us through all these things. We just have to do, do what he says. It, it isn't always easy, though. Sometimes, it, it doesn't, sometimes things don't always seem quite right or things aren't, aren't really easy, but God always knows what he knows what he's doing. And, and he clearly says that with them, with that they would eat the good of the land if they were obedient. But if they weren't, then he would send the sword. What we see in our own lives, the same kind of thing. He may not send the sword, but it's that kind of thing that if we do what God says, things will always be better spiritually in our lives. But when we don't do what he says, it's, it, we, can, we can know that spiritually that we will be lacking. We will, we will have difficulties. Things can, we will have more difficulties and less protection from God as he'll bring those more difficulties on us, trying to chase us back to him, trying to drive us back to his ways because he knows that if we wander away from him, that we can, and we're looking for everything else, chasing after everything else in the world, we can wander away and, and it's just not a good path. We get off that path, we have the straight path towards God, and if we get off that path and start wandering around off in the woods and in the ditch, 
it's just, it, it's, it's not a good thing. Things aren't going to go well for us. Uh, we'll go back to Hosea chapter 2. Verse 14. Okay, Hosea 2.14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of anchor for the door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day of when she came up out of the land of Egypt. It shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that, uh, that you shall call me Isha, and shall no more, but, uh, and call me no more Baal. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their names. And in that day, will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the fields. Uh, I will no more, in that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the fields and with the fowl of the heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. I will, I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord, uh, the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear uh, saith the Lord, I will hear from the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. I will sow her unto me in the earth. I will have mercy upon her that had, that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people and they shall say, Thou art my God. So we have God who is, uh, who is great in mercy. All, all the stuff that Israel, Israel does, uh, God spends, uses Jeremiah to call to them for all that time, spend all that time calling to them, telling them he wants them to turn, wants them to turn back, wants them to follow him, and all that time, he had long, very long patience, much longer patience than we have, that's, that's for sure. And uh, always calling to them, trying to call them back, but they wouldn't do it. And so he's telling them in, in, in Hosea what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen because of what you have done. But he, all, but he gives hope along the way. He shows... He has always been a Lord of mercy for all that, that Israel has done, all that Israel deserves. I mean, you know, we have, we go, we walk our own way. We, we have walked our own way at some point through life. Uh, we, at some point, we didn't know Christ. We didn't know God. And then we came to know God and everybody has their own story, their own journey after that. But sometimes we walk our own way. Well, God doesn't just give up on us. He's not just going to give up on us. He's going to keep pursuing. And God's saying that he's not giving up on Israel either. And although he's going to bring all these judgments, because he's faithful to do exactly as he has said he's going to do. He's not, he's not going to vary from his ways. He's not going to. All Everything we do deserves punishment of some sort. And some things that we do have have earthly punishments that, that follow it. And so God, but God is always faithful even when we are not. And he is great in mercy. 
we'll go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quick, quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were, we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in, in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So we have that emphasis that we were once dead. Christ came and pursued us, died for us, although we were dead in our sins. We were sinners. We were sinners who had no hope outside. Uh, if Christ had not come, it would be completely hopeless. We might as well live for today and die for tomorrow. And what does it matter if, if, we're, if we're just going to go to hell all our lives? But Christ did not want us to stay that way. God sent his son because he did not want us to stay that way. His great mercy over mankind for all the ways that we had lived. His great mercy that he had. He sent his son as he said that he would do. Fulfilling everything that God said that he would fulfill right to the letter. And God didn't give some sort of prophecy like tomorrow the sun will rise or at some point, you know, the economy will fall as we have some prophets do. It, 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 God doesn't give, blank, you know, prophecies that, that could be fulfilled at any point at any time, but very specific to the letter, to the date, and it happens exactly as he said it does. And so Christ came and fulfilled all of that, showing great love and mercy, and died for us, although, as one, as one person says, died although we were, we were spitting in his face, he still died for us. He chose, he chose that. He chose the humiliation and the death for us. Not that we deserved it, but because God is great, because God is good. God is great beyond all compare. Uh, Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep, keep his anger forever. We have a, a, a psalm of David, and uh, we know that David certainly had mercy, or uh, God had mercy on David. We know that we look at his life, God doesn't smooth over David's uh, faults. He, he showed them. Part of how we know it was written by God is that 
humans so often don't want to show you their their faults and their bad sides but god god puts it out there because we all have faults in our lives we all have things that are not right and it it didn't things didn't turn out as a bed of roses for jay for david because of his faults his faults got him in a lot of trouble and got his country in a lot of trouble but god was great in mercy he showed mercy to him he was gracious to him and forgave him because David always seeked after God. He didn't turn, he didn't, uh, he didn't turn and run from God. He didn't do any of that, but he turned back to God, knowing that he was his only source of mercy, his only source of forgiveness. We'll go back to Hosea chapter two. There's a, God, uh, he said in 16 that uh, uh, it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Isha, and I shall, and shall call me no more of all. Noticing that, uh, that uh, it, it, Isha is a name for husband, to look, your, your, your husband, your, the person that, the, that spouse that you're looking for, that you, that they, that they look towards for for help and protection and, and, and everything else. That that noting that Israel was going to look to God for 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 everything that uh, that Israel would need eventually. So we'll go to chapter three, verse one. <clears throat> yes, sorry, Hosea three one. Then saith the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friends, yet an adulteress, according to the love, uh, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who took, who looked to other gods and loved flagons of wine. So I brought her to me, so I bought her to me, for fifteen uh, pieces of silver and for a homer. Of, of barley and a half homer of barley and I said unto her thou shalt abide me many days thou shalt not play the harlot and thou shalt not be for another man so will I also be for thee for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a, a prince and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. So here we have the picture in Hosea, the, the him coming and buying this woman who, who is a harlot. Well, the same kind of way it is for us, that uh, Christ came, and although we were humans, mankind was walking away from God. Israel had walked away from, maybe not every single person, but they, Israel as a nation had walked away from God. This had been true. They had had no kings, no princes, no, no nothing. They had, all of that stuff had been taken away because of their unfaithfulness. But like with this, God came and bought us not with gold and silver, but with the blood of but with the blood of His only Son. He came and purchased us, although we certainly didn't deserve it. Uh, we'll go to Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter three eight. But beloved, be not ignorant, ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, 
as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we have who God is. He's not that uh, we shouldn't be, Peter uh, tell, urging these people not to be ignorant, that God is long suffering, that not that, you know, every day with God is a thousand years or something like that, but that God is, is, is outside of our time, that God is long suffering, that God um, sees things differently than we do. And uh, a, a lot of people might, and a, a lot of people, I'm guessing at this time, were looking, going, well, God, God just uh, is, is coming too slowly. He, he's, he's forgotten us, he's whatever. But he's saying that, that God doesn't like that. God doesn't do that. He's not, he's not uh, slack in his promises. His promises will come at the time when he, when he says they should, when he knows that, that, that they should be fulfilled. We have, time, we have times that uh, things are difficult in the world. We think, you know, Lord Jesus come, but we realize that when Christ comes back, things are gonna, get, are gonna be much different. But God's giving those times, trying to call to the people of the world for them to come to him, that every man and woman who might come, because he does not want, he doesn't wish that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. He wishes for everybody to come to him. He, he asks us, he commands us to go out and tell the world about Christ, because, and tell us, tell them about God and about Christ, because that's, it's not the only way that they necessarily find out, but it is the chief way that you have, is that his people go out as ambassadors and tell others about him, tell others how things can happen. God also puts his word out there. I've heard of more than a few people who have come to Christ just simply by reading the word of God. Amen. So that happens too. God has his ways, God, God has his things, but we are called to do our job, to do what we're supposed to do. And everybody has their own way to do it. Everybody has their own things they do. It is not all going to look exactly like one another. It's, it's just not. But we're called to be obedient and to tell others about Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy two one. I exhort therefore that first of all all supplicate first of all supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. <laughs> who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So God wants us to, to be a people of prayer, to be a people that would give thanks to him for what he gives, that we would pray for one another, that also the, the different leaders in, in authority, the leaders in, the, in, the, in this nation amongst many others, they don't walk with God. They don't walk with God. They care more about themselves than they do. And there may be some individual leaders that do, but as a whole, they, they don't. But God wants us to pray for them. He wants us to live peaceably with people around. Now, sometimes our message is not well received. That Those are the things that, is, that's just the part of being an ambassador of God, is that sometimes they won't receive the message that we give. We're also supposed to be, you know, wise as serpents and gentle as doves. We don't have to beat them over the head with the Bible. To, it's, it's not the way God would have it. But to, to follow God's leading and to do the things that he would say, 
so they can come to the knowledge of him. Uh, John 16, verse 4. John 16, verse 4. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me whether could. Where goes thou? Because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is, a, it, is, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and see and, and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said I therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show you shall show it unto you. So Jesus telling his disciples that he was going to leave, that he was going to leave and that the comforter was going to come, and that this was a necessary thing for him to do. Because if he didn't go, the comforter couldn't come. And so Jesus went to be with his father. And we have, and as a result, we have the Holy Spirit with us to guide us, to comfort us, to tell the, the truths of God, to, to all those things that it can bring to remembrance all the things that we have learned, all the things that we have, we have been taught to lead us into the best path of life, convict us when we're doing stuff that are wrong, uh, help us to, 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 to follow those leaders that would be appropriate and to not follow the leaders that don't follow him so it, it helps us through life guides us gives us it gives us true life god it says that you know god has quickened he has made us alive because we were dead once before but now we are alive we have his holy spirit we have true life within us and so he took us and so he leaves the holy spirit and the world is going to be is going to be convicted of sin. He, the world knows that what they do is wrong. They they know what they do is wrong. Yes, if we go, we can't. They quite often will say, "Well, I'm a good person," and and quite often they give a, a blanket statement from what I've seen, you know, because they don't they don't you know rape and murder people as if that's the only thing that is bad. There are plenty of other bad things out there. Some of them really know that they, they are sinners and they don't know where to look. Some of them don't understand what sin truly is. So, but that's why, that's why we're here. That's why God sent, sent uh, the Holy Spirit too, to give us wisdom to be able to do stuff correctly. We're gonna make mistakes, but that's, a, that's okay. God, God's there, tomorrow's a new day. With God's great and mercy, and we can always look to him for everything. We see this picture in Isaiah of, of, of Israel turning away, God pursuing this this uh, pursuing this this uh, this wife who is an adulteress that doesn't look towards God. We see this picture of great mercy and kindness. God 
will keep his ways. He's going to, he's not going to abandon Israel. He's not going to look, but they suffer a lot of stuff. And they have suffered greatly in the past. They will in the future because of what they've done. But they will eventually turn to God because he said that they would. However many are left at that time, I don't know how many, but they're going to go through a lot of stuff. But in the same way, God looks to, to the world. The world is walking away. And he wants he's to call to them. He calls to them uh, for them to come. We just have to go out there and tell the world about him and let God do his own work. We don't need to, we don't need to worry about what, what the results are of it. He, and that's, that's up to God. We just go do what he says. So, so luckily, God is great in mercy, or else we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> so we'll pray. Lord, thank you for your word, and thank you for this encouragement, Lord, and this help. Thank you for a remembrance of uh, all that you have done for us and who you truly are. Please, Lord, help us to show you to the world and help us, help us to... Help us and guide us through life. Give us the wisdom we need. We do not know what to do, Lord. Please, and, and uh, bless the rest of the service that it would be, it would glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.